There is a growing interest within Kingston and its surrounding communities, expressed by those curious to explore and document food histories. Sustainable farmers, public health staff, food justice advocates, local food activists, historians and geographers alike want to know what happens when publicly engaged research and food cross paths. They want to ask how historical geographical knowledge might engage with and support the practical efforts of organizations trying to rebuild the region's capacity to feed itself sustainably, equitably, and healthfully. We started by asking, why food history? You want food that's rooted in the cultural, historical traditions of the place where you, where you live. So to me, a sense of place, and I, I, it feels like I had to go 40 some years to kind of understand geography more fully than I did when I was working on yeah. <laughs> graduate work on it. That a sense of place is something that's very important to us and very missing in most of our lives. And I think that when one of the reasons people like local food is because it gives them a sense of place. Yeah. Like they, a woman drove out here from Bath to buy six bulbs of garlic, large bulbs of garlic, and she was thrilled to do it. I mean, it wasn't it wouldn't make any sense from an efficiency point of view, energy efficiency point of view, but she did drive out here, and she enjoyed the drive, enjoyed the landscape, loved coming in here, seeing the place, talking to me, so she had a real sense of her food coming from a particular place, so it gave her a deeper sense of being rooted in this place that she lives, in the, the broad regional place. So that's what I think is something else that I think underlies um, the strength of this movement, you know, it gives people more of a loss sense of knowledge, of local knowledge with industrialization. And um, an alternative or local food system really does require um, a whole rethinking of the entire chain, the food chain. So we need uh, to unearth that knowledge around everything from um, production, alternative forms of production, or older models of production to um, processing, local processing, the role of abattoirs in the system. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different distribution system that um, we have to rethink. And a lot of it depends on looking in our past to determine our new sustainable future. The other thing is we do have to be careful not to romanticize the past mm -hmm. and idealize it. I mean, we still had huge problems with uh, distribution and hunger mm -hmm. and um, uh, in the community um, and uh, food safety. So all these things are still really important, and uh, you know, but at the same time, there has been such a loss of knowledge of the past. So I think that there was a huge move on the part of the government to get rid of marginal semi-subsistence farmers, which right. according to the 1941 census was like about 30% of all farms were just kind of marginal in yeah. Canada. Maybe so, even more than that. Yeah. So um, you read the part. Two. So that I think as part of the streamlining yeah. of this I've, new agricultural I've, I've, industry, part of that was clearing people off the land who actually weren't commercially successful mm -hmm. farmers. So you see after 1940, the farm population just plummeting. What I think that was about was to say, okay, we've got to get our farm population and our farm production in a place where we can control it through centralized, um, centralized control for the interests, ultimately, of the global economy, mm -hmm. or that's global capitalism. <laughs> How can history be used in conjunction with kind of new technological innovation? And you might have an interesting oh, okay. Well, perspective I, I on think that. I think that um, everything that we do is is in a context, and it you know innovation I think has a context of, of what's been done in the past. You know, if you're going to oftentimes if you're doing research on something, you're going to do a literature review first, right? You're going to find out what's been done already. And by doing that, it may help you to, it may guide the process of what you're going to do in the future, and it may guide the process of, of innovating as well. So, you, I mean, you can't, you, you can't do it in a vacuum. You can't 
you know, go into the future in a vacuum, like, and, and ignore what's happened in the past, it would be foolish, and you're likely to try and reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Well, they had more diversified farms. Like, when, when my dad exactly. farmed, he had a fully diversified general farm. Mm -hmm. Like, he had hogs and chickens and dairy cows, yeah. and we, we only had, like, 85 acres in the first farm, on both farms, really. Uh, but the, the farm when I grew up after the war, kind of in the 50s and uh, yeah, in the 50s, was just very diversified and all the manure was returned to the land. There was probably very few, very little in the way of fertilizer inputs imported into the land. Mm -hmm. um, and the seeds, he, he had a fanning mill. He used to um, clean his own seed and every year, seeds. save all his own seed. Students are all over this topic. I mean, I I saw it 10 years ago when I started talking about, you know, sustainable food systems and food. There was kind of like this blank stare. Not all, not all students, but there was definitely this, okay, I'm not really sure why we're learning this, you know, what's the connection. Well, now it's just huge. Like, students are so, have bought into the, the idea that food is a political act and food, how we eat. You know, could solve a host of other problems. You know, greenhouse gas emission and carbon footprints. And, you know, they're really, really committed to it, and uh, so neat to see that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I have had a taste, but yeah. So seed to sausage. It's great. So, uh, some people will develop a relationship with him and seed to sausage, and you know, we 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 often think of local food as just being, um, you know, the farmer at the market who sells the produce. You know, but. We, we, we need to get processors back into the food chain. Right, so people exactly. like him, who are using Oliver Hahn's pork from uh, over uh, west of uh, Harrisburg, you know, he's a processor who we need to know. You know, we, as, as eaters, we need to know what he's got there. You know, you need to taste his sausages and decide whether you like them or not. You know, and he's going to inject character back into our, our, our local uh, regional food system here. So he's somebody else we need. Is that you know historians do talk about the farm movements of the 1920s. You know there was a huge farmers movement yeah. across the country in every province um, that took various forms. But the whole message of it was that uh, the laws favor manufacturing over mm -hmm. farming. And if we had the subsidies and the tariff support um, of that the industrialists did, we'd be absolutely fine. fine yeah. No, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm interested in how important um, for business these sorts of friendships may be in this kind of knowledge exchange, and yes. especially with people who have kind of been able to, as you say, performance or, or a certain skill that they've been performing over a lifetime, mm -hmm. and be able to kind of speak and collaborate with people such as those. Yeah, well, I think, I think it, it's, there's two parts to it. One is, is there's obviously skill and wisdom that you're tapping into, but I think there's also... Um, sort of a, a generosity that you're tapping mm -hmm. into too that's kind of natural and and I think is I think you maybe see a little more in rural communities than you do in other places I you know it certainly is part of my childhood and part of my business experience with what we hope to foster is the exchange of agrarian historical knowledge establishing skill sharing opportunities between students and teachers sustainable farmers, and local food activists. We hope to publicize the value and importance of historical understandings of food and agriculture through film, poetry, prose, drama, music. Employing activist and archivist efforts in the creation of a sustainable food system in Kingston and the surrounding region. <laughs>